obviously only one of those two people, but uh, uh, hello. I'm, Craig was pointing out that it was very considerate of me to include Canada in my bio. Um, also, you got called Biolans, like you are your own state in and of yourself here in the middle of everything. So, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for the kind introduction, and um, I'm going to share a couple of poems, and we appreciate you having us out tonight. Uh, I'm Levi, not Craig, so I go. Uh, when she finds those magazines, because we're stuck, this poem is stuck like, you know, 10 years in the past before we have uh, erasable browsers. When she finds those magazines underneath her husband's side of the bed, she'll stand naked in front of the mirror for hours, like, well, what did you expect? Bang dumb blonde, sexy singles, and busty burnettes. I must not be as beautiful as that advertising says. Excuse me, miss, I, uh, I saw your poster recently. I read your ad in one of Playboy's latest magazines. Actually, I fed pretty much every need that I believe photography could feed me. But if you can believe me, I hate it. You're worth more than my brief moment of orgasm when I allow my mind to deceive me. And look, I'd like to be an open book. It's hard to admit that I took take advantage of the desires God gave me, but I am not going to sugarcoat this. I feel hopeless, trapped in brokenness, like I lost before I ever started racing. I know as well as anybody, this is a difficult topic to be facing, a difficult confession for me to be making, but I'm stating that when God started the molding, Shaping and creating. You were not designed to be the objects that men look at while masturbating. Baby, never forget that you were made for relating. I'm sick of failing at learning exactly what it is I'm saying. And I apologize. It was never my intent to ruin lives, compromise, or feed these eyes something other than what God had designed. Sometimes, though, I feed that indecency. Just kind of slide that magazine across the counter and do it quietly. I'm going to shut my face away so the cashier can't see that it's me. Because I can be all for you today, sir. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'd like to pay to become the opposite of what I want to be. I should have waited, dedicated to see the experience that God had planned for me from the beginning. I am not patient enough to not give in to every sin forbidden to the hearts of men. I am not patient enough not to give in. But that, oh, again, you know, I just apologized like, like five minutes ago. And that, that was after repenting for last night and this morning. God, come on! What's going on? I'm sick of this. Somebody put some clothes on. You're better than this. God's most beautiful creation. And I sit here euphoric. Like I have the right to destroy it just because I don't have enough dedication to build a relationship with the one that can free me. So I resort to suffocation of my very foundations while claiming that I'm striving to meet the expectations of purity. Jesus, keep reassuring me. I long for covenanted eyes like Job's that deter their glances, stares at the computer screen, like the images dancing across my pupils are as lifeless as the LED, piercing the darkness that I grovel in, in my living room, lifeless while my wife lays in my bed in the next room, asleep. You are the only one that can redeem the years the locusts have stolen from me. The years that I've let them feed. Jesus, I know that you love me, and you're going to have to be my strength. Keep reassuring her. The one in the centerfold, the picture I'll remember until I grow old, she is human. You are human. You are bought and sold to a million empty souls feeling so hopeless that they'll do anything to fill that hole. I apologize. Please, please believe it's true. I never meant to hurt you. But when the betrayer kissed your cheek, did he slip his serpent's tongue between his greetings, Rabbi? And did you feel it forked and flickering against your skin? I guess it's vulgar, but I wouldn't put it past him. My tongue is shaped the same. 
I know without a doubt that I do not understand the weight in my pockets. Change clashing with change. And did you know that 30 pieces of silver was the penalty paid by the owner of an ox that gored a slave to death? I know, I know. I would have done it for less. More than likely, I'd have tried to monopolize. Like, you mean you didn't negotiate the rate and ask for a higher price? Counting my own pennies, like how high can I stack this copper and what's the value on my ROI when I decide to commodify Christ? Like moralistic, therapeutic deism was exactly what you were going for when you told us to make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of celebrity bank statements and motivate replication in the same dualistic vein as the way a.k.a. self-actualization, like we didn't commit cosmic treason so much as made a mistake and our bodies aren't growing along with the rest of creation and our hearts aren't broken. What good is reconciliation to an adulteress who doesn't see or need to consummate with God? Let alone that God would want or long after her, misplaced worshipers. Praise is inherent to the way we were made, but our hearts are easily led astray. Our hearts are idol factories. I was reminded of it this morning when I woke up intimately aware of my desire for God to bless this silver piece that I'm writing about elevating Jesus so that whoever sees it might elevate me. Preceding time and space, God spoke, and in that thunderous tone, purposed to forfeit his rightful throne and cloak himself in flesh and bone and enter into humanity. And we call it vanity. And we call it profanity, slandering, blaspheming, all hail to the king. Still I see my name in his handwriting, kite flying, flailing, but still tied with string that rejoices over me with singing, quiet me, repeat. And in the quiet conversations before the beginning, I wonder if you laugh together about what was to come, or what came, or however time works where it doesn't. Not making light of or minimizing my blame, but the kind of laughter that helps us cope with the pain. Like a farewell between friends when they know that when they see one another again, it will have hurt. But they both know that there's no other way. And in that perfect community's case, there's no character change. But the both end of God's wrath and grace cut crimson across Christ's face as the Father forsakes the Son and suffers in our place. And I don't have a son of my own yet. But I know what it's like to be forsaken by a father. Still, I see selflessness in that selfishness, and if sinful, lowercase s saviors think that they know how to give good gifts to their kids, then how much more a perfect king becomes sin that I might become his righteousness. When you predetermine in pre-incarnate existence to persist in pursuing the people you envisaged as the profane remnant made pure through crucifixion, the bloodstained hands redeemed through your submission. Did you shudder at the anxiety? Did you bleed my tight beads with your sweat at Gethsemane? Greater love knows none than to lay down one's life for his friends who were once his enemies. Condemnation flows through our bloodlines, and it's true that all of us have been consigned to disobedience. Yet through Christ, the Most High will have mercy on all of us. God, have mercy on all of us. I gathered thorns and rust and money for bludgeoning. Unleashed all of my fury, whipping, ripping ribs from their core, and washed my hands clean. I gathered fame and pleasure and glass strapped to leather, availed myself to the bales and whittled them into nails, and washed my hands clean. I gathered dice and clothing and splinters and beer, clenched my fist for the blow and washed my hands clean as if Pilate and I are really stained lead. It has been said that behind Calvary lies the throne of heaven. When you carried the grave to Golgotha, was the crown eclipsed by the cross. When you were suffocating, did you think back to time that predated time? Drowning to the sound of mockery on both sides. That's my voice. Today you will be with me in paradise. That's your voice. And when they cast your clothing for lots, did you recognize their intimate design? Giving up your life to the sound of pride screaming, crucify, that's my voice. 
to Palestine, that's your voice. And when they mocked you and called you a liar, did they see the truth in your submission? When you withheld power and submitted your spirit to the Father's vision, when the centurion was gifted with conviction, following your dying plea, that the Father would convict him, that the Father would forgive him, that the punishment that the perfect law demanded would be rescinded on your behalf, did you wash our hands clean? At the cross of Christ, I see compassion, mercy. And Jesus is more than a selling point for a piece of self-serving silver penance on personal piety. When at his cross we see compassion and mercy. We can't keep flogging ourselves for staining filthy rags he isn't sold on either. When they retrieved your broken body and buried you beneath time and sin and space and folly and guards set to ward off thieves, did the thief come in to gloat and glory in your defeat? And did he slip his serpent's tongue between his lips to kiss your feet? And did he slither at your side for all three days, boasting in his cunning? And did he ever see it coming? When they retrieved your broken body and buried you beneath wrath and love and hate and cup pleased to crush the lowborn king, did the thief come in to curse the quarry that quaked in God when death lost its sting? Did you crush his serpent's tongue between his lips using the skin scarred into your feet and swallow the grave in victory? You swallowed the grave in victory. Thank you. Thanks. So um, now comes the part that I don't have memorized, which is always far uh, rougher than the part that's memorized. Um, my, my name is Levi McAllister. I was introduced. Um, I, I've been I've been touring for coming up on seven years now. I started in '09 touring with hardcore bands from the Albuquerque scene, which is where my wife and I are from. And um, and, and and through all of that, uh, got connected with with Triple X Church because of the first poem that I did. Uh, called Pretty in Pornography, which was really just a repentance piece. Um, when I started doing Levi the Poet, uh, my vision for that project was that it would be something that was realistic, uh, which I know like the first thing that goes out the window is realism whenever you tell people how realistic you are. It's like the number one no-no or whatever, you know, but so I don't, you know, this is the only time I'm gonna tell you that. And, uh, um, I, that's, that's what my bio should have been. Levi the Pope, realistic, so real. Um, but the, the, idea was, the idea was for it to be something that, that expressed the reality of what, what I had, had grown up in and, and gone through, um, that it would be a, a project that, that modeled repentance, um, that, that it would be a, an opportunity to bear all before others the way that I, I believe Christ uh, bore all before us, and not, not only his all, but bore all, our all, uh, shamefully despising the shame. Um, and, and then something that was redemptive, uh, something that I, I believe in uh, a, a God who, who, is, who is greater than, than the sum of the evil uh, that exists and can work all things according to, to his glory. And, and one of the things that I believe that in my life uh, he is redeeming is, is a, a nine-year-long-ish um, pornography addiction that started when I was about 12 years old. Uh, my dad uh, took me out, we, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so um, my dad, he took me on a man trip. I don't know if you've uh, been on any man trips lately, but it's, um, it's really exciting. We, uh, we, we drove an hour and a half away uh, out to a cabin in the middle of nowhere with no electricity because we're men and we wanted to build fires and drive ATVs. And uh, on the way out there, we almost died. We tried to uh, pass this guy in a truck. Um, who, who rolled down the window and stuck a double barrel shotgun out the window and shot it into the air above our car. So uh, that's what New Mexico is like. Breaking Bad is real. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, so we stayed behind him and just drove slower. But uh, we, we went on this man trip and I got, I got to learn about sex and I got to learn about masturbation and I got to learn about porn and uh, we got to talk about it and go through Dr. James Dobson's Preparing for Adolescence and talk about what a great time it was going to be and how I shouldn't do any of the things that I was learning about. So I went back home and did all of them. 
and, uh, and that kind of started the uh, the journey into a, a place that I mean I can kind of tell a funny story about now, but in the end it was kind of a tragic thing, um, and, and it was just something that I, I could not uh, could not get away from, could not separate myself from, no matter how hard I tried, uh, no matter how condemned I felt. I, I mean, I I used to uh, I used to stand in, in in the bathroom in front of this big mirror that we had with middle fingers raised to my reflection, just saying, "You're going to go to hell." You know, like God is not going to forgive you. Um, there, there, there's so much like shame and, and, and condemnation that came with with the struggle that I was going through. So much, so much heaviness, and a lot of people can attest to that. I, I do think that even Paul speaks into that in, in Scripture when he says that sexual sin is, is a different kind of sin, something something that affects our bodies. Um, and and so I, I remember whenever. I, I first started to hear about what Triple X Church was. I was living in Texas at the time by myself in a double wide doing an internship for this music magazine, uh, which is not a good idea to be by yourself in a double wide for three months with internet connections. And so I sat there thinking, uh, okay, or like I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a beginning a relationship with my girlfriend who, who's now my wife. I'm, I'm thinking through uh, how, how I've just been completely ensnared by this thing that really I got into because of that same idolatry factor. Like our heart to idol factories, we want pleasure, we're pleasure seekers. Um, maybe this could be something that would help me in the midst of depression, in the midst of, of, of um, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, my English teacher called it youthful angst, but that still felt pretty heavy to me. I mean, I wanted to die. So you go after these things thinking that they're going to make you happy, and then eight years later, I'm sitting in the middle of this double wide thinking, this has not freed me from anything. I feel more imprisoned by, by all this than I ever have before. Who, you know, Paul, a wretched man that I am, who, 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 who will save me from this body of death. Um, and then he says, praise be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I also know that the Lord Jesus Christ works through community and works through people and works through other things to help us, us flee and to help me flee. And so I'm sitting there, I pull up triplexchurch.com and uh, I think it costs something at that point in time. And I'm sitting there looking at my computer knowing that I need to do this, but at the same time thinking... Why in the world would I pay money to block all of these things that I want to be seeing on my computer? <laughs> I mean, I, well, it was so counterintuitive, and at the same time, it's something that I knew I needed to do. One of the things that Triple X Church has provided for a long time is an accountability software um, that isn't salvific or it's not going to make you unaddicted, but is a, is a, was a pretty rad tool that I got to use to to help me kind of flee and get away from that thing. So anyway. Joined up, uh, signed up for it, um, started started actually talking to people about it, which uh, we walk in the light as he is in the light. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us, like this double grace whammy thing that happens, uh, forgiveness and cleansing. And Triple X was, was a part of that. So when I started doing We By The Poets stuff a little bit later on, a mutual friend of mine got me connected with, with Craig. And, and, and he gave me the opportunity to do a couple of youth things and then eventually do this Porn Kills tour, which I think is kind of what, what got uh, y'all interested in, in having us be a part of this thing tonight. Um, but it's, it's just been a really cool, really amazing way, I think, for me to see uh, the Lord combine like, my hopes and desires for the art that I was trying to create along with the redemption of, of, of this, this thing that I struggled with. Uh, for such an incredibly long time, and 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 so I, we're we're here tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna invite Craig back up in a minute, and then we'll both come up and, and speak a little bit more. But um, I, I just hope that tonight is is like my prayer before going into this was just that it would be a freeing thing. Like you guys said, like we're starting a conversation. Craig and Triple X have been doing this thing for a really long time. Um, by the grace of God, I've gotten to be a very small part of that. It's definitely, you know. But, but I, I hope that this can be the start of a cool conversation. And, um, and, and I, I would applaud your, your bravery, you know, in, in sitting in here. You are the, uh, the lucky few that get to come and listen to a porn talk tonight. And by the looks of things, you've got five days of it. So we'll see how many of you are left by uh, Friday or whatever is going on. But um, thanks, thanks for letting us be here. And I really do hope that tonight's helpful. So Craig, if you want to come back up.